There are a number of choices with respect to connection of the fuel supply to your new carburetor. You'll either have a single feed 4160 with a single inlet bowl, a dual feed 4160 with separate inlets for each fuel bowl, or you'll have a 4150 model which will also have dual feed bowls. The difference between the dual feed 4160 and dual feed 4150 models is that there's no secondary metering block on the 4160 models, so the distance from center to center of the bowl inlets is shorter when compared to the 4150 models. To start the connection process, let's look at the fuel line. Some stock carburetor types had steel fuel lines that ended in flare compression fittings. Some steel lines will fit directly to the inverted flare fitting that comes in place on most single inlet fuel bowls. This can be the case for many 4160, 4165, and 4175 applications. Sometimes all that will be needed is to remove the existing flare fitting and replace it with one that matches the threading of your existing fuel line. If your steel lines won't match with the position of your new Holley carburetor, you may need to make an adjustment. In this case, you can either change the entire fuel line from the fuel pump to the carburetor with fuel plumbing supplies from Earl's, or you can modify the existing line and fittings to work with your new carburetor. One popular choice is to use a tubing cutter to remove the end of the fuel line that ends in a compression fitting. You can also use this tool to modify a fuel line that might be pointing in the wrong direction for the fuel entry point on your new carburetor. When slipping a fuel hose onto a cut line that has no barb, make sure the inner diameter of the hose matches to the outer diameter of the metal line. Outer diameters of steel lines will match either a 5 16 or a 3 8 of an inch inner diameter of fuel hose that should be available at any auto parts store. It's also a good idea to use two hose clamps to help prevent a fuel leak. The next item along the fuel line should be a filter such as Holly part number 162-563. Every carburetor should have an inline filter located between the fuel pump and the carburetor inlet. For dual feed carbs, the filter needs to be installed just after the main fuel line and before any fuel line splits. Also be sure to examine the filter for a label that shows which side is the inlet so that it's installed in the correct orientation. For single feed carburetors, if your fuel hose inner diameter is 5 16 of an inch, you can use the non-swivel part number 26-24 or the swivel banjo fitting, part number 26-25. For the banjo fitting, start with one gasket on one side of the banjo and another gasket on the other side. Remove the compression fitting from the carburetor and swap the brass or screen filter from the compression fitting into the banjo fitting. Then cinch the assembly in place at your preferred angle and tighten snugly. Use the exact size wrench to prevent rounding off a corner of the banjo fitting. If you have a 3 8 inch inner diameter fuel hose, you'll need to use part number 26-29. There are also options for connecting AN style fittings to a single feed carburetor by using part number 26-75. For dual feed carbs, there are a lot of choices. Part number 34-150 is meant for use with 4150 models. If your 4160 has center hung float bowls, you'll need part number 34-160 which is a bit shorter because, as mentioned, the 4160s have no secondary metering block. Both lines are stamped with their intended model number usage. Center hung bowls come with the fitting number 26-27 pre-installed. This fitting screws into the 7 8 20 thread count of the bowl and has a 5 8 18 thread count inverted flare to accept the fuel lines. You can remove these fittings and use one of a lot of different offerings from Earl's, like part number 101276ERL. There are other aesthetics as well, such as the 103176, which has bent lines, and all of the equivalent Earl's products are available in the Anotuff series with silver and black coloring. Street Avenger carburetors come with all of the fuel line connection pieces you'll need to get your carburetor connected to a fuel supply. If you want to use the included parts, install the fuel line fittings first and then the hose pieces. If your fuel line is at the front of the engine, the longer pieces go to the rear bowl and then the shorter one to the front bowl. Join the two hoses with the included fuel T and you'll have a 3 8 entry point for fuel coming from your fuel line or filter. For models other than the Avenger series, the most economical and cleanest looking setups will be any of the one piece hard lines that we mentioned earlier. Now that the fuel feed line is in, it's time to finish off the fuel supply connection. If you have a hard line installed, all you need is one of the 34-21 or 34-22 adapters. 
Hold the line in place with a wrench and cinch it on nice and tight. Also, make sure that you've pulled the pressure tap plug and sealed it with a liquid Teflon sealant. Don't use Teflon tape. Pieces can break off inside and they might even cause clogs or even fuel flooding. Be careful about your routing to make sure that your fuel line and filter don't interfere with any other underhood components. In the advanced tuning section, we show you how to properly fill the bowls with fuel to prepare for startup. But for now, let's move on to the last few steps of the installation. 